3D models can be very informative and effective ways to convey information and explain different functions. If an interactive 3D model can be incorporated into a slideshow, for example, the level of the presentation can be significantly increased. Have you ever wished you could embed a 3D model into your slideshow? Let me show you one solution on how to do it. Hello boys and girls, it's Olli here once again. I was recently asked to give a presentation on 3D Gaussian splatting models at an event and pretty soon after I started to prepare a slideshow on the topic, I realized that there is no decent way to present interactive 3D models in standard PowerPoint or Apple Keynote programs. Of course, they allow you to insert various links into the slides, but in practice this means you have to jump between the browser and the slideshow program in the middle of the presentation. That's why I started looking for a different way to build the slideshow. After a little googling, I came across a web service called slides.com. And what particularly caught my eye in its way of presenting online content was the feature where you can use a so-called iframe element in your presentation. Slides.com is a completely web-based solution for creating slideshows. This means that the presentation is stored in the cloud and assembled entirely in a web browser. It is a free service that can be accessed by logging in or using, for example, a Google account. Once you get in, you can easily start creating a new presentation by clicking this New Deck button here. After that, you can choose a template for your presentation from a variety of options. And for this demonstration, I'm going to choose this dark background. The slide editor itself is very easy to use. In the middle, you have the actual slide. And here on the left, you can find different tools and elements that you can add into your slide. On this first slide, I give my presentation a title, which in this case could be, for example, my 3D presentation. Then I can create more slides from this plus icon. And behind it, there is a new menu with a different templates again. From there, I select this template with a simple text title. Now I can move this text element up a little bit and write the topic of this slide that I want there. Next, I can select the appropriate element from this list on the left. And what we need is this iframe element. By clicking on it, we get a gray box like this in the middle of the screen, which we can then easily drag and scale to better fit the slide. And now that we have this iframe element selected, its parameters and all the settings can be found here on the left. And there at the top is the field where we can enter the iframe code. And the code we are looking for can be found, for example, on the Polycam service. When we go to the Polycam service web page and browse the 3D model in the public library there, here we can find many different 3D models, but in this case I want to specifically borrow a model which is made by using that Gaussian splatting technique. For example, this nice little model of this church is excellent for this purpose. I can easily find the share link behind these three dots where I can find more information about this model. Or alternatively, if you are locked into the Polycom service, you can get a little more options. Then you have the option to copy either the share link or the so-called embed code. Both of them works in this case. Once the link or embed code has been copied, you can go back to the slides.com and paste it into this field. And then right away we see how the iframe element brings the 3D model from the Polycam service into the slideshow. 
In this editor mode, we can't actually rotate the 3D model, but when we turn on this green eye icon on the left, we can preview how the slide will look in the actual presentation, and now the 3D model is interactive and we can rotate it within the slideshow. And we can see that this Gaussian splatting embed runs quite nicely. From these blue arrows down here at the lower right corner, we are able to go back to the first slide and likewise to the second slide, where we have now embedded our interactive 3D model through the iframe element. And we also see the process how it downloads the model from the Polygon service. We can return to the slide editor mode by clicking this pen icon up here. Next, we want to create another slide to our presentation. And when we roll our mouse over this plus icon, we see what other options we have creating new slides. Here, if we press the control key down and then click this plus icon, we get a duplicate of this slide that we just created. From here, it is easy to select the already fitted iframe element and erase its code for another embed implementation. And this time we could look at how to retrieve the corresponding code from the Luma AI service. Since Luma Labs is currently focused more on AI video productions, and their main service is clearly this new Dream Machine system, it is a bit difficult to find pages for older 3D services on their website. To get into the section about Gaussian splatting and interactive scenes, you have to scroll down to the bottom where you will find a link called Capture. From there you will be taken to the familiar homepage and if you have previously created Gaussian splatting models in the Luma AI service, you can access your own library by selecting this first item here. But of course you can also browse and explore the public library of different Gaussian splatting models if you don't have your own models made in Luma AI service. Anyway, when you open one of the models, here in the top right corner there is this share button and behind it a window like this will open. In the same way as in the Polycam service, you can find a similar link or embed code here at the bottom. And like before, once the link is copied, we can go back to the slides.com and paste that code into this iframe field. Luma AI's viewer is very good in that sense because it loads really quickly and it utilizes a nice looking opening method where the model reveals itself from the point cloud and the camera automatically rotates inside the model. This way you can enrich your presentation and bring something more engaging than just text or images into your slides. I recommend playing with the iframe element and experimenting with how it can be positioned in relation to the text or other elements. One interesting way is to use the same 3D link as a background element. You can press this slide background button in the middle here and then choose the iframe option from there. And when you paste the URL link into this field, now the Gaussian splitting model that we retrieved from Luma AI will fill the entire background and rotate in there. You can also decide whether the background is interactive, which means whether it follows mouse commands while the presentation is running. This provides an interesting way to produce a slide where you have a 3D model in the background and the text elements or images on the top of it. We can edit the appearance of the text and load PNG images into the presentation. Slides also has an animation options where we can define simple entrance animation to the elements. These actions can be adjusted either behind clicks or by setting delay time setting for them. 
This way we can easily add interesting information on top of the Gaussian splatting model and play with different elements. And because this is an iframe element, of course you can bring any content from other websites. You can add videos, games or even interactive 3D content from the spline service. Any online content where these embed links are shared will work here. So it doesn't have to be just a Gaussian splatting 3D models. For example, you can also find these similar embed links from the Sketchfab service. And this way you can easily bring more different kind of 3D models into your slideshow. And also something that is good to understand because this is based on online publishing, the slideshow itself comes behind a very clear URL address. It is easy to share and you can use it in other situations also than just a typical presentation where you show your slides to the group of audience. With the slides.com service you can easily build an automatic presentation for example, for info screens, which you can then run at the exhibitions or various events where you want to present updated information from different screens. The presentations can be easily made to work on both smartphones and tablets. This online service is very versatile. The only mandatory thing to make it run is the internet connection and the web browser. Here at the end I would like to tell you how I ended up using this presentation method in practice. As I mentioned at the beginning, I recently visited an event which was held in Denmark, in the city of Aalborg, where different parties specializing in location data and mapping information were gathered. These Korttage, which means map days, organized by the local GeoForum, brings together companies, service providers and government agencies with an interest in infrastructure mapping and the development of geo-information systems. I was invited there to give a presentation on the 3D Gaussian splatting technique. Our session was a really nice little happening among the other forum sessions where we also held a small workshop on different application of how Gaussian models can be 3D scanned and produced. On this event I used my presentation that I made using the slides.com service. In there one practical thing came across. Even if the presentation works fine on your own computer at home, it is also worth testing it in advance how well it will run on other computers. Because not all laptops that are often used at the event like this may not be suitable for 3D graphics and they may not be able to run 3D models in the same way as on your gaming PC at home. That's something I often forget when I play with these 3D models. Luckily I had my iPad Pro tablet with me, which M1 processor is powerful enough to demonstrate these 3D functions. And one more thing that needs to be mentioned, when we are presenting 3D models in events like this, it is a good idea to bring your own 3 button mouse with you. Handling and rotating the 3D model from a mouse pad is relatively difficult. All in all, my presentation went well and our session was a great success. I think we got a lot of new Gaussian splatters interested in this modeling technique. These map days were a really nice three-day event. And it just happened that this was also the 50th anniversary of this event. So the evening party was also really nice. I want to thank Hans and Ronnie and the whole GeoForum team for inviting me to this happening. I had a great time in Aalborg. If you want to see my presentation that I did on Gaussian splatting, I'll put the link there in the description. 
I hope this video was inspiring and gave you new ways to use your 3D models. As always, if you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll continue to explore new 3D presenting techniques. Thanks for watching.